been almost one year since an EF2 tornado tore through the town of Christiana, leaving behind unbelievable damage and actually flipping a home. The woman inside, 41-year-old Angie Walker, died. Her husband filed a lawsuit against the construction company, claiming the foundation was not properly secured. Tonight, Storm 5 meteorologist Heather Mathis is looking into safety standards as weather experts see more damage to homes following severe storms. 97% of the tornadoes that we see in the midstate are survivable if you're taking the correct steps to be in the lowest level of your house and the most interior room. But here's the thing, you must be in a sturdy structure. The National Weather Service has a warning for Tennesseans as more homes are going up and more people are moving into the midstate. Make no mistake, Tennessee is a very, very active place for tornadoes. In an EF2 tornado, we expect to see damage like this to the roof and exterior of the house. You don't expect to see a home flipped off of its foundation, like what happened in Christiana last year, killing homeowner Angie Walker. Or this damage from February of last year when an EF2 tornado leveled this home in Clarksville. So in this case where we had the EF2 in Clarksville and Christiana, where you had uh, substantial damage. We knew that something was a little bit off. Chrissy Hurley with the Nashville National Weather Service believes what was off was the foundation. Those houses were not attached to the foundation as well as they probably could have been. According to Hurley, their storm survey team found that the home in Clarksville appeared to only be attached to its foundation in the corners. You don't want to see come up on a house where it's only, you know, bolt screwed at the corners or even worse, nailed onto the foundation. In a lawsuit filed by the family of Angie Walker in Christiana, the family claims that Ralph Baxter Construction did not properly embed the anchor bolts in the foundation of the concrete footings. Hurley says despite the damage, both homes met the state's code's requirement of being able to withstand 90 mile per hour winds. However, these EF2 tornadoes saw peak winds at 125 miles per hour. You know, if you really want a house secured during an EF2 tornado, you need to have it, uh, you know, concrete filled and bolt screwed every 36, 48 inches. If you have a poor foundation, then everything in the entire home is going to be affected. What it takes to endure an EF2 tornado is something developer Chris Robinson knows well. The tornado came through this particular subdivision, but all of the homes were all still standing. All of the brick was still on the house. All of the foundations were in good shape. The different methods used to secure a home to its foundation all comes down to money. Robinson says this is not the place to cut costs. Just like the anchor bolts, you can use a, a flimsy metal strap Instead, that just it's a simple strap that's folded over the top and nailed into it, but it, these bolts will actually have a washer go around it and tighten down to the actual plate itself. Robinson has advice for new home builders. Get references, talk with previous home buyers, also check with your local codes department. Be on the site, you know, check out your foundation, make sure that things are going in that need to be put in properly. As more people are moving into Middle Tennessee, we asked Hurley, is our state code to withstand 90 mile per hour winds enough? So I think it would be smart you know, as far as Tennessee is to make sure that, you know, we build to withstand something that you could call Dixie Tornado Alley. After the Christiana tornado, Rutherford County adopted new codes for newly built homes as of February 1st of this year, increasing their codes requirement from 90 miles per hour up to 115. Now we also found that five other counties, Williamson, Wilson, Sumner, Bedford and Lincoln also have a requirement at 115 miles per hour. Residential codes can vary from each city and county, so it's important to reach out to your local government and check out what the requirement is where you live. I've put together a complete list across Middle Tennessee that you can find at newschannel5.com. In studio, Heather Mathis, News Channel 5.